Hi everyone, it is such an honor to be part of this important event with you. I really wish we were doing this in person, although there is something to be said for relaxing at home and putting your feet up, not too bad either. Thank you for making the time to join us tonight. I am the biggest Olympics buff there is. I watch Olympics nonstop when they are on. Why? Well, the reason I love athletic competition and I spent nearly 20 years in sports broadcasting is what it says about life. Sports is a microcosm of life playing out right in front of us. In August of this year, the Olympics were held in Tokyo, and I'm guessing some of you may be just as Olympic junkie as I am and may have been watching the track and field men's 800 meter semifinal live with me too. So here's what happened. Isaiah Jewett had won the NCAA 800 meters and he placed second at the Olympic trials. Heading into the Olympics, he was in the top four in the world. Now he was in the semifinals and needed to place in the top two in order to be in the finals. Up until that moment, this was the race of his life. Coming around the final turn, he was in close pursuit of three runners when he was clipped in the back heel and he fell hard to the ground. The runner he had contact with also fell hard. Then with barely a couple of stunned seconds, Isaiah got up, helped the other runner up, put his arm around him, and together they ran way at the back of the pack to the finish line. I hope you watched that video. Just Google Isaiah Jewett. Do you think his action had reverberating impact on young athletes worldwide? The simple act of watching someone lift someone else when they were down? Oh, you better believe it. Young athletes everywhere copy what they see for good and bad. It's not too different for the rest of us. In fact, NBC turned that into an entire produced message about how young athletes mimic what they see on the global stage. They pieced together footage of Isaiah's fall with other footage of a kid's soccer game somewhere in the world where a little girl fell, other moments in competition where someone falls, and then came back to the footage of Isaiah helping up the competitor he was tangled up with, then back to the footage of children helping other children up. Anyway, it was a great way to wrap up with a nice bow what we had just witnessed. A USA Today headline read, American Isaiah Jewett's act of sportsmanship after being tripped is bigger than a win. Not all of us can win medals, but all of us can lift another, and it's bigger than a medal. Isaiah literally lifted where he stood. Later, when he was asked why he did that, he said, they both needed to finish the race. And you know, isn't that life itself, finishing and finishing well, and even better, helping us all finish well? As we think about what it means to lift where you stand, it's not really a big ask. The big ask would be lift a nation by yourself, lift a world by yourself, lift a neighborhood by yourself. Now that's a big ask. This ask is about what you can do right where you are at this stage in life, financially, emotionally, situationally. It may not be much at all. Maybe it's just asking someone you know to watch this event because it might be something that they want to help with. It's about doing something, anything, when you see someone down, down on the ground, down on their luck, down on the socioeconomic ladder, ladder down on the very basics of survival. Down in any way, is there anything you can do to make their day, their life a little better, right from where you stand? When my son was six years old, his elementary school started a new tradition. The principal called me and let me know that I needed to attend a special year-end school assembly, recognizing some of the students. I had no idea why, she just said it was important. So I left work and came in at the back with all the parents, and this was an awards assembly. And after all the traditional awards were given out, I was still wondering why I was there. Then the principal got up, went to the podium and said the school decided to create a first ever humanitarian award. And the first recipient, my first grader, Jacob. I was speechless. Why? He was in the first grade. I soon learned that every day at recess, while his friends played soccer or tag, he played basketball with two special needs students on his own. No one asked him. He would encourage them to shoot the ball and then when they missed, he would chase down the ball, bring it back to them to try again. And gradually over time, he got other students to join them. Eventually, 
The whole class started including the two special needs students in more of their activities. You know, the parents of these two students noticed and gratefully appreciated how their special needs children were being so accepted. Right where he stood, all of six years old, he did something to make a difference. He had no money, no great skill sets, no influence, just the desire to do something to help. So he did something. What does it mean to lift? You know, if you have a bad back, just the word lift can make you cringe, right? But that's not what I'm talking about. To figuratively lift. Is it to inspire, motivate, give a hand? Just a hand, not your entire life. There's a book review in Forbes entitled, So You Want to Lead, Lift Where You Stand. And the review is on a book entitled, Everyday People, Extraordinary Leadership. The whole book is about the formula for extraordinary leadership is not waiting for title or position. It's lifting where you stand. Hmm. It's about the influence you can have in ways right around you. And that is what leads to extraordinary leadership. A few years ago, I interviewed the Adjutant General for the Utah National Guard, Major General Brian Tarbett. Now, this was at the height of our U.S. presence in both Iraq and Afghanistan. And something he said really stuck with me. He said, our Utah Guard members, no matter how difficult the orders, always, quote, bloom where they are planted, end quote. They don't just show up with all their gear and drive around in armored tanks and vehicles. They built schools. They created order to enable voting. They delivered tons of school supplies to kids and teachers. They did more than their already hard job of being half a world away from their families in the extreme climates, long days, unexpected demands. They lifted by building schools, doing more than their job. I had a chance to go to Iraq in 2009 because of my work, and I went with a platoon into the town of Balad to deliver school supplies to a girls' school. As I talked with some of our soldiers, one of the Iraqi men came over with a big smile, and he pointed to one of our soldiers, and through a translator, he said that he had named his new baby boy after this soldier who had paid special attention to him and his family. What had the soldier done? This soldier, turns out, had shared some of his candy. He had brought pens and paper that his family had sent him to give to these new Iraqi friends. He encouraged this family to send their girls to school. The soldier didn't think it was much, but to this man and his family, he had given them vision, vision of democracy, of education for his whole family. He lifted them right where he stood in his army issue boots and very little resources. But his actions and those of other soldiers actually grew into an entire strategy of winning hearts and minds by serving the people in Iraq, in Afghanistan, helping them build schools. On the other side of the world in Guatemala, Ernesto was about five years old when he started working side by side with his father to plant, cultivate, and harvest their fields of corn and beans, berries, and other produce. He couldn't go to school past his third year because he was needed in the fields. He married at age 16 per the local custom of remote life, and they had five children. As their family grew, he needed help to increase his crop yield. Ernesto borrowed $65 from a family friend and invested it in the purchase of additional seeds, but that year, his entire crop was ruined by too much rain. He was determined, though, to pay back his friend, and that's when he learned about Mentors International. That's when he met Venancio, one of the 175 mentors with Mentors International. After learning about financial and business best practices, he received his first microloan of about $260. He bought more seeds to plant five acres, and with his successful harvest, he repaid his friend, repaid the microloan, and ended up with a net profit of $131. He didn't stop there. The lift he received just by talking with Venancio gave him the confidence to move forward to better his situation. He applied for another loan, this time for $327, and planted even more produce. After that harvest, he had enough net profit 
$262, which was enough to buy his first acre of land. Ernesto remembers that when he met Mentors International, he had a debt of $105 and no savings. Today, Ernesto no longer has personal debts, and he's been able to save $118 so far. This has brought a better quality of life for the whole family, but especially for his children who have been able to continue studying in school. So who did the lifting here? Certainly Ernesto helping himself and looking for help. Venancio, who was there on the front lines to provide local guidance and support to about 500 clients. And many of you watching right now who made what you may have thought was a simple donation to Mentors International last year, but to Ernesto, the $260 changed the course of his and his family's lives. And the loan was repaid and reinvested into lifting more who need it. In conclusion, each of us find ourselves at one time or another when you just don't have the capacity to lift anyone else. You know, sometimes it's hard enough to, to lift ourselves and that's okay. We all take turns being in a place where we need to be lifted and only you know when you are in a place to lift others. Thank you for even taking the time to be part of this virtual event. That right there is doing something and that's lifting right where you stand. If you can do more, you know it's incredibly appreciated. Thank you so much uh, for taking this time to be with us. It's a pleasure to be with you and I send best wishes to you and your families. Have a good night, everyone.